Okay, let's let's just uh, remind ourselves a little bit about um, what we what we did in the last chapter. So, <clears throat> so once again, you know, the the Mishnah is now going through all of the avodot of uh, Yom Kippurim in the order that they're brought in uh, Psukim. So, in the beginning of uh, in Parakei. We have the bringing of the Ketoret inside of the Kodesh Kodeshim. And one of the one of the issues that I want to speak about, and this is one of the things I want to come back to, was when there was an Aron, exactly how that was placed in the in the in the Kodesh Kodeshim, exactly what the placement was. And uh, there's some interesting Gemaras about that, uh, which, I, again, I, I need to organize them a little bit more, but we'll come back to that. Uh, but part of what I want to do is just to clarify as best we can exactly what happened. Uh, you know, one of the issues that the Gemara brings up at the beginning of this parak is... Um, Exactly how how he you know, the Mishnah ends up by by telling us that he took the Malochaf Nav Torah, he takes the Torah in, in his hands and he put it into this kli called a kaf. And then he takes the kolpan and the kaf, kolpan in his right hand and the kaf in his left hand, and he goes inside. And uh there's a whole question about why he puts it into the kaf. Why doesn't he take it in his hands? Because that's that seems to be what the pasuk says, and it says it's not a practical thing. He can't hold it in his hands and take the coals inside. And of course, no, it's obvious no one can go in with him because that's express. It, it's expressly said in the pasuk. It's also understood that he can't go out. He can't make two trips. Like you can't bring in the coal pan and then bring in the ktoren. Um, and so it, it talks about different, uh, different things that he might do that get very awkward. And it ends up by concluding that this is why the Mishnah uh, has it the way it has it. We may come back to that. Uh, I'd like to come back to that, actually. Um, then until we mentioned this that when the Aron was, since the Aron was gone in the in Bayit Sheni, that he just went to the place of the Aron to do these things. I want to talk a little bit more about that, about uh, the missing Aron and how that affected, um, how it affected the Abodah for the day. And then he does the dam of the par, he, then he does the dam of the seir inside in the Kodesh Kodeshim. And then he does the dam of the par and the dam of the seir, Neged HaParochet in the Kodesh. And then he does the, uh, then he mixes them together and he does the dam on the Mizbeach. Um, Right, and then the last Mishnah, just to remind us, this is an important thing which we visited a couple of times. Uh, we said, everything that's said on doing the, <coughs> the acts for Yom Kippur. goes in order. And if he, in Hikdim Ha'asevachavero, if he did one act before the one after it, or the next one, uh, he, loa saklum, he didn't do anything. Right? So presumably if he, if he, if he, presumably that would be enough to tell us, right, that it has to be a precise order. <coughs> but then the mission went on to give us specific examples. Hikdim dama seir le dama par. 
So what if he did the dam of the Seir before he did the dam apar? Even though we mentioned, practically speaking, that would be difficult for the Kodesh Kodeshim because the dam apar is ready and the dam of Seir has not yet has not yet appeared because he hasn't yet shafted the this the, the Seir. Uh, but whether he did it in the Kodesh or Kodeshim or whether he did it in the Kodesh. He has to go back uh, and sprinkle from the uh, So in other words, if he did the Dhamma Seir, and then he did the Dhamma Par, then he goes back and does the Dhamma Seir, right? Because the the, the Dhamma Par that he did is still kosher, the fact that it was preceded by the Dhamma Seir didn't invalidate the Dhamma Hapar, but he still has to do the Dhamma Seir. It's as if he didn't do it, right? Lo asaklum, if he, since he was Makdim, since he did it earlier than the Dhamma Hapar, he didn't do anything. It's as if he didn't do it at all. So he has to go back and do it again. Uh, and if before he did the matanot, right, the, the par in the seir, the blood of the par in the seir inside, inside the kodesh kodeshim, if the blood spilled, then yavi dam acher v'yachzor v'yazebat batchila bifnim, then he has to go and bring other blood, meaning he would have to go and shecht another animal and then go back and start the whole thing over inside. The came the hechal, similarly, if, if, if it happened in the hechal, similarly, if what happened in the hechal? He spilled blood. Yeah, yeah, so if the blood spilled and in the race, so remember when he did the Dam Hapar and the Dam Seir, Bifnim, and then in the first rounds in the, in the Hechal, the bloods are still separate. He still has one in one Kli and one in the other Kli. So if either one of them spilled, then Yavida Macher for the one that had spilled, the Achzorvi Azebat I'm sorry, the Chimba Mizbah, the Kenbe Hechal, then he would go back and, and redo whichever blood that had, had spilled, he'd have to redo, or he would have to do. The Chimba Mizbah Hazahav, right? That's the last round of sprinkling. Shekulan kapara bifnei atzman. All of them are kapara unto themselves. And Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Mikom, Shema Peshapasak, Misham Humatchil. So Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Shimon say that from the place that he stopped, that's where he's going to begin. Meaning what? Uh, we talked about last time. So what? how are they... What, what's their machloket with the Tanakama? Within each set of uh, sprinklings, they can just continue. They don't have to go back to the beginning and, and start again, whereas the Tanakama says you have to start from the beginning of the sprinkling. Right, exactly. He said, he said, uh, the, shalok, the Tanakama said, Imad shalok gamara dam, dam acher, batchila bifnim. Has to go back to the beginning of wherever it was. So let's say he was in the middle of Dam Hapar, and then before he finished all of the eight sprinklings, the blood spilled. So he has to go back, shaft another par, bring new blood, and then when he sprinkles, he has to go back to the beginning, go achat, achat va achat, achat v'shtayim, and so forth. And Rabbi Yehazah, Rabbi Shimon say. 
So if you did however many sprinklings and then the blood spilled, he brings new blood, but he just continues from where he left off. But they don't disagree with the basic premise of the Mishnah, which is if the, which is that you need to maintain the order of the sprinkling. So there's significance to the order of the sprinkling, which you might say is obvious, right? Because that's the way it is in the Torah. But sometimes things that are in the Torah, they're, not, they're, they're la mitzvah and not la akev. Sometimes things are just there that this is the best way to do the mitzvah. But if you didn't do it this way, it doesn't hold back the mitzvah. But here we learn out that it's, this is my case, that the, same, that the Seder itself has a significance. And what do you think, this, in, when it, here, here the emphasis is on the order that the blood is being sprinkled, so what difference do you think it would make based on what we know? Why would it be important to do the Dhamma Par before the Dhamma Sahir? Um. I mean, the Kohen needs to atone for himself and his family before he can atone for anyone else. Right. So, I mean, you know, some say the atonement sort of, it's sort of it's concentric circles. Yeah, so the idea is that, so very good. The idea would be that we, <clears throat> we talked about this earlier, that first he has to bring the par, Hold on, there's, I'm on a side street, but there's still something noisy going by. Just a second. That first he has to bring the Dhamma par because the, he, the Kapara is for him and for, his, and for the Kohanim. And that, ha, that is a prerequisite for the Kapara of Am Yisrael. And, and yeah, and why is it that why is it that that's the prerequisite? Why is it important that the Kohen gets Kampara first? I mean, he can't at all, he can't do any of the other avodah unless he's in good graces himself, so to speak. To so put to speak. Into Christian, to put things very. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not sure that's the best uh, <laughs> terminology. I'm not sure. So to speak, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that he should be in a state of uh, of kapara. Uh, so yeah, so that so this 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 fits in now to this mishnah that we uh, about the seder. So the seder, it's not only that he had to bring be makriv the par first and shecht it first, but he also has to sprinkle the blood first because ultimately that's the kapara. The kapara is going to be linked to the sprinkling of the blood. So it's a little bichti. It's not for nothing that, that we're very careful about the order that he's doing these things. Okay, so um, I'm going to leave some of the other questions for another time. I'm going to make a big effort to try to finish some of the Mare Mekomo that I started last week. And in the meantime, let's go on. Let's go on to the beginning of the sixth chapter. So, okay. Okay, so let's remind ourselves again of the Psukim. What are we up to? So in the last few Mishnayot, um, we we went through these psukim. Uh, beginning in Pasuk Yud Bet, Lakach Molo Machta. Lakach Molo Machta Gachleish, Mea Misbech, Mifne Hashem, Molo Hafnav Ktor Samim Daka, Behebi Mi Bet La Parofe. Right, so he took the Coal pan that's full of coals of fire from the outer mizbeach, and then he malochafna hand the, the, his full hands, handfuls, hands full, two hands full of ktorat samim daka of the fine ktorat samim, and he brings them into inside of the parochet into the kodesh kodeshim, right? So here, what I alluded to before, you can see that. 
the pasuk here isn't isn't exactly clear about how he does that because if he's holding two handfuls of ketoret, how exactly is he bringing in the cold pan? Right, so the Gemara discusses that. So he puts the ketoret on the fire before Hashem. So he creates the cloud by putting the ketoret onto the fire. He goes out, he takes the dam hapar that's being stirred by somebody outside of the hechal, and he brings it inside, and then he does the hazaya, right? He does the sprinkling. <clears throat> and then he goes out, he shechts the he brings the blood of the seir again inside of the parochet into the kodesh kodeshim, and he does with this blood, the same way he did with the blood of the par. Uh, Nobody can be with him inside of the Omoed when he's doing this. So now maybe we understand a little bit better why this Pasuk repeats this idea that he's, he's doing the Kapara for himself and for his house and for all of Kahal Yisrael. It has to do with the order. That the order is ma'ake. That first he has to be mechaper for himself and his and his household, and he did that through the process of a bringing the par, shechting the par, uh, bringing the par, saying a bidui for himself, and then a little bit later doing a second bidui on the par for uh, for beit for the Beit Aharon, right, for the Beit Kuna. And that was the, and that, that, that's, that was the uh, foundation for him to do the Kapara inside with the blood of the bar. And then Uva'ad called Naha Yisrael, with the blood of the Seir. So then he'll do the hazaya onto the mizbeach itself. So that was the blood that he sprinkled on the mizbeach hazav. So now he's finished doing the kapara for the Kodesh and for the Oha Moed and for the Mizbeach. And at this point, he's going to be Makriv the Seir Hachai. So, Samach Aron et Shtei Adab al Rosh HaSeir Hachai, Vihitvada Alav. So, now that he has done the par and the seir, and that has laid the found, those two things are not are foundational, and they have laid the foundation for the kapara, not just of him and his family, but and for Kal Yisrael, but for the for the Mishkan or for the Mikdash itself and for the Mizbeach. They all need a kapara. And then he can do this Yer HaMishtalaya. So he uh, leans his hands, his two hands on the head of the live goat, and he confesses on it. At Kol Avonot B'nai Israel, all of the sins of B'nai Israel, that Kol Pishehem, and all of their Shaim, the right? So again, we had we have this same formulation we had earlier, where you have Avon, Pesha, and Chet, 
and we discussed the order earlier. We'll leave that for now. But at the time, O Rosh Hashayir v'Shilaf Biyadi Shiti Hamidbara. So, of course, one of the questions is, what Avo notes is he being? Is he is he uh, being mitvadeh? What 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 sins is he confessing that hasn't been covered all, uh, already? And uh, and why on this you know why in this particular way with the seir amishdaleach? We discussed some of that when we learned parshat achremot, and we'll come back to it. Uh, but right now, I'm just setting up to before we go into the Mishnah. In the, so actually, let's stop here. Let's go back and look now at the beginning of the sixth parak into the Mishnah. Hang on. Yeah. So the Mishnah is going to start by going backwards a little bit, right? Because at this point, there's only one Sa'ir. He's already shafted the seir, uh, the seir lechatat. But now it's going to di- digress a little bit and tell us the dinim that are pertinent to the seirim themselves. So it says shnei seire yom hakipurim. These two goats for yom kippur mitzvatan shiyu shnei hen shavim b'mar'e uvekoma uvedamim uvelekichatan ka'achad. So they have to be equal, they have to be the same in appearance, in height, in their value, and in their taking. And even if they aren't equal, they're still kosher. So here, Mish is already setting us up. It says that they should be the mitzvah is that they should be equal in all of these ways. But if they're not equal in all of these ways, they're still kosher. But ideally, you're supposed to get two seirim that essentially look exactly alike and are exactly the same in every way. And why would you think that is? Why do you think that we would want to have them the same? They're meant to be all. They're meant to be interchangeable. I mean, you know, that that's the whole point of the Gora load. It could be one or the other. Okay. Yes. Right. So as right, we talked about it when we talked about the Gora load. That in principle they could be one or the other. I think I want to revisit this maybe at, at some point also. That this whole idea. Um, they are meant to be interchangeable to a certain, right, in a certain way. Um, I, I would like to maybe take that a little bit further to say each of these Sirim is being brought for the purpose of Kapara, but they don't, they don't serve precisely the same purpose of kapara. In other words, each of them is coming to, is apparently going to be mechaper on different things. But, so it, it's as if, it's as if maybe, you know, that the ideal would be you have, you would have a single entity that you split and one of them goes not just into the Kodesh, but even to the Kodesh of Kodeshim, and one of them goes way outside of the machanet, right? It's the opposite direction. So I'm taking something and I'm kind of splitting it to to go here and to go here. I think we should come back to that. Um, Let's continue in the Mishnah though. Lakach echad hayom, echad lamachar k'sherin. If we took one today and one tomorrow, they're kosher. So they're kosher. What is that in opposition to, or what is that contrasting to earlier in the Mishnah? What did the kichana kechad? 
Right. So this seems to be telling us, you know, as it were, what Lekichatan Ke'achad means. So what does Lekichatan Ke'achad mean? Taking I would it. say it means that they were taken at the, have to be taken at the same time, although later on the Mishnah says not necessarily. Right. So that, but so that's the ideal. So whoever you know was picking out the the seirim, ideally this is what they're looking for. You know. So any of us who've gone um, etrog shopping, you know, like we go and we look and. We look at everything really carefully. We're looking for mumim and chazaziyot and all kinds of things. So imagine you have to do that with an animal and you have to find one that to begin with is, you know, it's a tamim animal, has no blemishes on it. And then you have to find another one that's exactly the same. So you can imagine this was a very challenging thing to do. Um, so now, what if somebody went and they got the Si'irim and they brought them and they were all ready, but one of them died? If one of them died, before the lots were cast, then you Then you just get another one. You get a you get a twin for the second one, the one that that didn't die. So that's simple. But the im mishihi grill mate. What if he cast the lots, and then one of them died before he could perform these acts? Yavizug acher. Then he has to bring. Um, he has to bring another pair, the Agril Alehem Batchila, and he has to cast, cast the lots on them from the beginning. The <coughs> Yomar. Uh, I'm sorry, but he, not that he has to bring another whole zug. This zug here means the same as what he what it said before. He cut zug l'sheni. Here is, he'll bring another zug. He'll bring another twin, and then he's going to cast the lots again. Yomar im shel shem met zesh ala alav hagoral l'shem yitkayem tachtav. The im shal zazel met. So he had two Sirim. We'll call them A and B. He had, or well, we'll say the we'll use the term shame, right? One was the shame and one is La Zazel. And then one of them died after he did the Hagrala. Now he has to do the Hagrava again. <coughs> so what does he say? Yavi zug acher v'yagril alayim batkila v'yomar, im shel shem meit, ze sha'ala alav ha-gora v'shem, yitkayem tachtav. If it was the one that was a shem that had died, then the one that now the lot for Shem has fallen on it, is going to stand in its, in its place. The Im Shal Azazel mate, if the, it was the Azazel one that died, Zesha Allah Allah Gorab Azazel, Yitkayen Tachtav. Then, right, then the, the, the lot that fell on the, the one that's Azazel, it's going to stand in place of the first one. Zed, okay, Vashemi Yir And the second one is put out to pasture until it develops a moon, right? It has to do it. In, this, is, this is a din of, of Korbanot in general. Um, I think we'll look at this a little bit more next time. 
but the idea is that you may maybe you've learned this from other things that if the if a korban is no longer if an animal that was supposed to be brought as a korban cannot any longer be brought as a korban you can't just get rid of it you have to because it's uh, it's now raui the korban it's fit to be a korban so you put it out to pasture until it develops a moon right because with the, the animal that you had it before you was tamim it had no moon so you wait till it gets a moon and what is it what when it when it gets a moon why do we wait for it to get a moon why is that important for it to get a moon once it has a moon it's no longer acceptable to be a korban and therefore it can be alienated or used or what have you Okay, so the de- so yes, yeah, so once it has a moon, then I've removed any possibility of bringing it on the mizbeach. So the din here is sheni your ad she and it will be sold and then you take the proceeds from the sale and you use them for korbanot midava shen chatat zibur meita. Because Chatata Tzibur doesn't die. Um, so what does it mean, first of all? So you take the proceeds and you buy you buy uh, Korbanot Nidava. So the Korbanot Nidava is Nidava for the Tzibur. It's a voluntary Korban that, uh, that you bring in the name of the Tzibur. And it's brought as an Allah. And you and you uh, bring it to the mizbeach, you know, when you have time, when there's when the mizbeach is not otherwise occupied. Um, and and why do we do that? Shem chatat sibur meita that the chatat of a sibur doesn't die. Meaning what? Chatat yachid is meita. That is, if the chatat of the yachid. It, became not fit to be brought on the Mizbeach, then you actually, you, you, let it, you let it die by letting it starve to death. The, but the Korban of the Chatat, the Korban, I'm sorry, the Korban Chatat of the Tzibur is not Meita. We don't do that with the Chatat of Tzibur. We'll see a little bit more about that in the, in the Bartimur. Rabbi Yehud Omer, Tamut. And the Buddha says, no, actually the Chatat Tzibur, in this case, should be left to die. The Odama Reb Yehuda, Mishpach Adam, Yamuta Mishtaleach. If the blood spilled, then the Sira Mishtaleach should die. Meita Mishtaleach, Yishafech Adam. And if the Mishtalech is dies, then the blood should be spilled. So what is Rabbi Huda saying? If the blood is spilled, if what blood is spilled? The only blood would be uh, would be the first seir. Right. So the first seir, the seir the chatat. So the seal of Hashem, which is being brought as a chatat, we talked about, right, in the previous Mishnah, what happens if the blood spills. So Rabbi Yehuda now says, if the blood of the seir of chatat, uh, the seir of chatat spilled, so we said you have to bring dam acher. But what we didn't talk about is bringing damacher. Does that mean I just go and get another seir? Or does it mean now I actually have to go back and get a pair, or I, I have to, or I have to go back and do the hagrama again? Right. I have to. I, I, that seems to be that seems to be the implication. You can't just go if the par if the par. If the dam par spills, so you could just you just had one par, so you go out and do another par. But if you have the seir and the blood of the seir spills, 
well, that Seir had been chosen al Yudei HaGrava. So maybe you have to go back and then and do the whole HaGrava. And if that's true, Nishpach Adam Yamut HaMishtaleach, then the Seir HaMishtaleach has to, has to die. In other words, it seems that he's, meant, that he's addressing two things. One is this idea that uh, you have to do another Hagrava, but also that in this case, it's not Yirea Chistaeg, if it doesn't go out to pasture until it gets a moon, but it actually dies. You have to bring about its death by starving it. And similarly, Meta Mishtaleach, what if the Sir Mishtaleach died before you finished sprinkling the blood of the first Seir, then you pour out that blood and you start all over again. So let's look at the Bartanur on, on what we saw so far. So Shnei Sirei Yama Kippurim uh, so the Bartner says, right? They're both either white or they're both black, and in height and in, and in value. Why, why these three things? Because they're three psukim. They say, then it says, Velakachet Shnei Hasirim. And then it says, Venatan Aron Al Shnei Hasirim. See, each time they're mentioned, they're mentioned as, as this pair, as two Sirim. The Kevan de Sirim Tre Mashma, right? So the Sirim implies two. It's the meaning, in this case, not just the minimum two, but both of these two. Ma Talmud Lamar Shnei, 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 Fatazine. So why does the Torah say Shnei three times? Ela Shiyu Shavim Bimar E, Ubukoma Ubudami. It's a remez, right? It alludes to this idea that they have to be Shnei, they have to be a pair on three counts, on three, in three aspects. The aspects are that they have to look alike, they have to be the same height, and they have to be of equal value. Okay. So, and the Lekichatan, as Michael Schwartz said earlier, Lakach, Echad Hayom, Echad Nabachak, Sherin. So, that's another thing. That's a fourth thing that it, you should get them at the same time. But if not, it's still okay. Now, if one of them died, if it was before, if he died before the Hagrava, then you bring a companion, a second one, for the, uh, another one for the second one. And if it died, after the Hagrala, Yavi Zug Acher, Yagril Alehem Batchila, Yomar, Im Shel Shem Met. So the Bartonir says, Happy Mi Parshan. This is how we explain this. Im Shel Shem Met. Yomar, Zesha Allah, Allah, the Goral, the Shem, it Kayem Tachtat. Im Shel Azazel Met, Yomar, in other words, the formula here is not a formula you say each time because after the Hagrala, I know which Seir was which, and I've marked them, right? I tied a, uh, I tied a, a red uh, strip around the, uh, the head of the, of the, of the one that's on Zazel, and I tied a red strip around the throat of the one that's going to the Chatat. So one of them dies, even if they look exactly the same, I know which one is which. 
So what does he say? He doesn't actually say but he, if this is what he says, it's like colon a im shall shame mate if the if the one that was lashem died then he would say zesh ala alav goral lashem mitayem taftam the one that now fell on lashem is going to be instead of instead of that one the im shall zazel mate this is b Right. If if we know that the the seir the azazel was the one that died, then he says the one that now has the goral for azazel on it is going to be in place of that of that one. Vasheni, back to the bartunura, im shel azazel mate. The second one, if the one that was Azazel was the one who died, Vachshav Yeshkan Shnaim Lashem, and now there would be two that would be Lashem. Echad Shnisha Mizug Rishon, Echad Mizug Sheni. One that was left over from, right? So, right, because we had to begin with Echad Lashem. So now we're talking about what if the Man Lazazel died? Now I brought a second one. Now I'm throwing the lots again. Now the lots that was that went to the shame the first time went on the original Lashem, but maybe it's not going to go on at this time. Maybe it's going to go on the one that I brought now for the first time. So yes, so. So what would happen? It's it would be problematic, right? And you can't have two lashem. Im shel azazel made v'achshav yesh kan shnayim lashem echad shnishar mizug rishon v'echad mizug sheni. Now I would might end up as it were with two. V'echad mehen yitkapru v'sheni yere. So he'll be mitkaper with one of them, and the second one will will uh, go out to pasture. V'chein im shel shem meit, v'harei yesh kan shnayim la'azazel. Echad yishtalach v'asheni yirech. V'sheni shebezug, v'sheni shebezug sheni, hu shire ad shipo bogmun. V'sheni shebezug rishan, hu shikrav im hu shel shem, o yishtalach im hu shel azazel. Shein ba'ale chayim nidchin im era lahem shat absu adain yechulim nihitaken kishiz dabeg lo acher. Okay, so I think I read this. <laughs> I think I read it incorrectly the first time. Just one moment. The first time I said, Yavi Zuga Cher, that he brings another care. Then I said, I thought maybe it means just another one. And now I have to admit, I got a little confused. So now he's explaining if he's bringing another whole pair, let's go back and, and read it in the Mishnah. Yavi zuga fair. She's bringing another pair after the first one of the one of the sirim died after the hagrala. So yavi zuga affair. We agree on a hembat pila. We are in shall shame met in if the if from the first pair. 
the Seir Lashem died, Zesha Allah Allah Gora Lashem Mitkayen Tachtav. This one that has now received the Goral for his shame is going to stand before it, uh, stand instead of it. And similarly, Imshal as Azel mates, if in the from the first pair it was the Seir La Azazel that died, Zesha Allah Allah Gorala Azazel Yitkayim Tachtag. Then this one is going to stand in its stead. Vasheni yure ad and the second one goes out to pasture until it gets a moon. So, which is the second one? It's the goat from the second pair that that uh, its counterpart did not die from in the first pair. Is that clear? <laughs> or, in other words, the Shemi can either be the, sec- the goat from the second pair, or it could be the goat that survived from the first pair. Even though that sounds strange, right? Because why would you call it Shani? But it's Shani to the one in re- relative to the one that died. Okay, so let's let's try to clarify this a little bit better. So we we started off with this, with a pair. We had Sir Lechatat A and Sir Lazazel A. <clears throat> one of them died. So I bring another pair. Now I have Sir Lechatat B and Sir Azazel B. And then I do a Hagrala on the second pair. Now, the one from the first pair, I know which one died. I know it was either the Sir Lechatat or the Sir Azazel. So in the case when it was, this, let's say, the Sir Azazel that died, so now I'm going to say, or the Kohen Gadol is going to say that the Goral that now falls on, <coughs> excuse me, the Goral that now falls on this, on Sir Lazazel B, that's going to take the place of the one that died. And then the second one is going to go out to pasture until it gets a moon. So now the question is, which is the second one? Is the second one Sir Lashem A, or is it Sir Lashem B, which is the second one? So in the Bartanura, this is what he's saying. Let's go back to the beginning of this so now he's done another Hagrala. And he has two more Sirim. So we have Sir Lashem. Sir Lazazel A died. And Sir Lashem A is still alive. Now we have, we've done a Hagrala. I have two Sirim. I have Sir Lashem B and Sir Lazazel B. Echad shenisham mizug rishon, echad mizug sheni. But now I have two that are Lashem, right? So the Sir, the, the one, the, the Goral that fell on whichever Sir to make it Sir Lazazel, that's clear. That's the Sir Lazazel because I lost my first Sir Lazazel. But now I have two Sirim that have been designated to be Sirim Lashem, Sir Lachatat. Echad shenisham yizug rishon, echad yizug shini, uvechad mehem yitkapru, vasheni yireh. He's only going to do kapara with one of them, and the second one is going to go out to pasture. V'chein im shel shem meitz, v'harei eshkan shnayim la'azazel, 
Echad Yishtalach, one of them will be the Sir Mishtalach, Vasheni Yireh, and the second one is going to be put out to pasture. Vasheni Shebezug Sheni Hu Shireh Achipo Bonbon, and which is the second one? Sheni Shebezug Sheni Hu Shireh Achipo Bonbon, like Michael Schwartz said. The second one that's in the second pair is the one that's going to go out to pasture. The sheni shebezug rishon hu shiyikrav im hu shel shen o yishtalech im hu shel azazel. It's either depending on which one was was survived from the first pair. Either it's going to be a shel shen, and that will be brought then as the sir chatat, or it will be the sir mishtalech if, if the sir mishtalech from the first zug survives. She'en ba'alecha, and what, what's the reason that I take it, that I, that I keep the first one, and I don't use the second one? She'en ba'alecha im nidchin, because I don't push away animals. And even though a, a moment of psul felt befell them, meaning that when the seir, one of the seirim died from the first pair, then it was a shat psul for the one that survived, because at that moment, it can't be brought. It can, it can either be a chatat, whether if it was the chatat that survived, or it can't be sent out if it's the sir mishtaleach. So in that sense, it, it has a moment of psul. But it, it can still be fixed, it can still be remedied, and it can be paired up with another one. So, so what happened to him? Is there no way to get away to, in this uh, um, in this game? That what? <laughs> right. So the second, the first. Can, can, can one of can the, the second year of this, of, uh, stay alive? It's going to, it, so the second seer, the, so the din according to the Tanakama is Yireh Ad Shem Yistaev. And then, and then you can sell it. In, in other words, it will survive, but it will, not, it will not be brought as a korban, where it will not be, it will not ever be a korban, or it will never be a seer mishtaleya. And the, and the reason it survives at all going to the Tanakama is because it's a it's a korban sibur. It's a chatat sibur. And a chatat sibur is a nameta. It doesn't die. In other words, I don't leave it to die. But the whole procedure is done because the only way you can bring a seir, either the chatat or the azazel, is if it has, uh, you know, it's ben zug at the time, at during that time. So it's from the and from the time of the hagrava until the, until the chatat is shechted and the blood is brought, the seir la azazel has to remain alive. And if it doesn't remain alive. You're going to have to start the procedure again. Or if the Sir Mishtalech dies before you finished, uh, before you finished the well, actually, if it dies at all before you get to send it out, even if you did finish all of the uh, blood sprinkling, you'd have to start again. The, the whole idea is that you have to have these two Sirim. You have to have them in this order, in you know, existing in in life, until until you kill them, <laughs> until the until it's time for them to die. 
And so, yes, the sec when you bring the second pair, when you bring the second pair, one of them inevitably is not going to be brought, either as a sir khatat or a sir bazazel, depending on which one you're replacing. That's inevitable, but you have to do a hagrala in order to bring it. But what comes out of this is that um, what's interesting that comes out of it is that you might have thought, and this is the whole point of saying, Shem Ba'alei You might have thought that, okay, I did the Hagrala, and let's say then the Sir Lachatad died. So you might have thought, okay, I have to start the whole procedure again. I'll bring two more Si'irim, and I'll just, I'll use them. And the, and the one that was left over from the first one, that should be Yireachi Steve. And why would I think that? Not, not simply because it's simpler, but because we, may, we emphasized at the beginning of the Mishnah that, you know, ideally you do, you know, Lekichatan Ke'achad, and all of these things, they should be the same. Everything should be the same. They should have been taken at the same time. And also, when we talked to, you know, back in Perak Rivi, we talked about the procedure of doing the Hagrala. We have this idea that it's at this moment that this decision is being made from on high, right? This is basically, we're, we're throwing lots so that Hashem will show us which Seir is which. It's not something that we're really allowed to choose for ourselves. So it would seem that it's significant that you should do the Hagrala for both of them at the same time. But what's come out now effectively is that the, when you do the second Hagrala, you're not, it was not done at the same time as the first Hagrala, obviously. And I'm, but I'm going to still use the Goral from the first one and a Goral from the second one. So it, it splits up the Goralodes in a kind of, a, I would say, in an, in an un, maybe an unexpected way. But nonetheless, the Hagrala has to be done. And the Hagrala is still indicative of which one Hashem wants us to use. The end result is that the two that are eventually used are not nece won't necessarily be equal. They may may not necessarily be equal. So we know that it, we know from the beginning of the Mishnah that it's still going to be kasher. Now I'm wondering, you know, maybe whoever was in charge of buying the animals, maybe he tried to get four that were exactly alike, just in case, or at least three. But uh, um, yeah. So this is. Anyway, let's 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 go on and we'll try to finish the Mishnah. So Hasheni The second one has to go out to pasture until it gets some room. She just as said, So Bartunur says the chig dimire chataot metod that when we learn that chataot are metod that they are left to die, the achid dimire we learn that out for a chatat of an individual. Usire yom hakipurim chatot sibur he sirim of of yom kippur are the chatot of the of the whole community the whole. Population. When the Torah tells us that you have to bring the the, the sirim, it says they're going to be brought from Klal Yisrael, from the whole congregation. The chatat meita, who shemach nisino ta the bayit echad. So what's a chatat meitzah? You put it into a house, into a room. 
and the Nikhino Tasham Ajitamut, you leave it there until it dies. Which sounds rather cruel. Yeah, I have some questions about that also. But that's that's learned out elsewhere. I think it's in the Gemara and Zbachim that uh, talks about that. Okay, so then Shein Chatat Sibur Meita and Rabbi Yehuda said Tamut. He said no. The second one here, even though it's Chatat Sibur, uh, it should die. So here. What's interesting is also we should point out in the Chav Yitu Dama B'Gava Shem Chatat Sibur Meita. We're talking about the one that was a Chatat. We had two, right? One that was a chatat and one was a zazea. So let's go back a little bit in the Mishnah. So could, could you repeat the question? I was. So I I didn't I didn't ask a question, but I'm leading up to a question. Maybe you understand what the question is going to be. The klal, according to the to the Tanakam, is is. Um, that chatat sibur doesn't is not meta. We described what meta means. I'm not going to explain it each time. So, do both of these sirim have the din of a chatat for this purpose, or just one? Right. So, you notice this is how the Mishnah is phrased. Let's go back to this beginning part. The Imi Shihi Gril mate, right? So if one of them died after the Hagrala, Yavi Zugacher, you bring another pair, the Agril Alehem Batfila, Yomar, Im Shal Shem mate, Zeshala Rabba Baral Shem, Yitkayim Tachtab, Im Shal Zazel mate, Zeshala Rabba Baral Zazel, Yitkayim Tachtab. Rashini. So here, the second possibility is im shel azazel mates zesha alav ha'goral azazel yitkayim tachtav. Ba'sheni, so the sheni here is going to be um, is going to be a chatat. Just to clarify, I can hold up my fingers. We have the first zug and we have the second zug. So if the if in the first zug the uh, the Sir uh, Lazazel died. So when I bring the second zug, I'm gonna pick a new Sir Lazazel. So this one. From the first zug, that's a chatat. So now I know that if it's a chatat sibur, according to the Tanakama, it's it's not meta. So it's ira achistae. But what if what if it was what if it, <laughs> I'm getting confused looking at myself? Uh, what if in the first case the chatat died? So I bring another zug. And one of them is going to be a chatat, and the one that's left from the first one is the sir la zazel. So now, what happens to that one? Is that considered to be a chatat sibur, and it's not meita, or is it something else? The the Mishnah here, and the in this reading, right? It's not it's not entirely clear, right? Because the Mishnah brought the, the case of Im Shel Azazel Meit second in the two possibilities. Either, either the Seir of Shem died or the Seir of Azazel died. So it brings the Seir of Azazel, if that died, as the second possibility, 
And it ends off by saying, Because it's a chatat sibur. In that case, it's clear. So the question is, this whole sec, this whole part here of the Mishnah, Vasheni Yirat Shistaev, and so forth, is that only in the case of when the Sir the Azazel died? Or is it in both cases? What's considered to be a Khatat Sibur for, for this purpose? Do I consider the Sir Vazazel to be a Khatat Sibur? That it's not meta. This is a this is a question. <clears throat> and Rabbi Huda Omer Tamut. And Rabbi Huda says that regardless, it's going to die. And furthermore, the Olamar Rabbi Huda Mishpach Adam Yamuta Mishdalayach Meta Mishdalayach Yishapach Adam. So let's see the part in the bottom of Rabbi Huda Mishpach Adam Shel Seir Shel Hashem. Obviously, because that's the blood that we're concerned about. It's the blood of the Seir Hashem. Yamuta Mishdalayach. In that case, the Seir Mishdalayach that we chose is not going to be sent out because I'm going to have to do another Hagrala. So the first Sira Mishtaleach, according to to Rabbi uh, Yehuda, is Meita. Daha lo itavira mitzvah the dam because the the mitzvah of the blood was not done. V'chol ha'avodot ha'asod b'videi lavan b'in bifnim b'in b'chutz. All of the services that are done in the Big Day Lamad, whether inside or outside, the Torah says Chuka, and that means that it's a cave, right? It holds back unless you do them properly. And as we learned in the previous Mishnah, it has to be done also in order. So now you have to bring other blood. It's impossible to now bring dam chatat except by doing a new hagrala. And since Rabbi Yehuda holds not like the Tanakhama, and he holds that Baalei Chaim are nitchim, that, he, that even in this case, when you already have a sir mishtalech, it's chay kayam. because I have to bring a new zug, do a new hagrava, it's now going to be mitre, it's going to be pushed away. And in that, and in that case, it, it, it's, uh, it's mate. It's a meta. Meta mishtalech, mishtalech adam. So what happens if the Sira Mishtaleach died before the blood from the Seir was brought, before the, the blood of the Seir Chatat was brought? Meta Mishtaleach, af al gav t'shiluach lo me'akev t'ibrei hakol. Even though everyone agrees that actually sending away the Seir Lazazel is not ma'akev. It doesn't hold back the whole mitzvah. Tikit ktiv chuka la'akev advarim shahakohen ose bibigde lavan, like he just said a moment ago. When the Torah says chuka, it's regarding the avodot of Yom Kippurim that the Kohen Gadol does. And he doesn't do the shiluach of the Sira Mishtaleach. That's Biyad Ish Iti. That's a different Kohen is going to do that. Lo Advarim Anasi Biyad Ish Iti. Not, right? It doesn't refer, the Chukad does not refer to this act that's done by this, the Ish Iti to take the Sira outside of the Beit Mikdash, push it off a cliff. Nonetheless, 
Yalfin and Mikra, we learn from the Pasuk Tiv, Yamod Chai Lifne Hashem Lechaper Alav. The Torah says explicitly that Zir Mishtalech has to stand alive as part of this process of the Kapara. Ad Eimatai Zekuk HaMishtalech Lamod Chai. So how long does it have to stand alive? Ad Sha'at Matan Damo Shachavei until the blood is sprinkled of the other one. So if the Sira Mishtalech dies before the, all of the blood was sprinkled from the Sira Achatat, then it didn't count. Whatever was done until then doesn't count. So it has to be made up. You have to replace it now with a new one. You can't bring one without doing the Hagra. You can't bring another Seir without doing, but in this case, to bring another Seir Chatat without doing the Hagra. And you need two. The Rishon Yidache. And the first one is going to be the one that's 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 pushed away, that's taken out. Everybody holds that shutim are nidchim. That if they, if once it's slaughtered, it's out of the picture. What does that mean? What does he mean at the end? Let's just remind ourselves. So mate, this whole thing is to explain what happens when meta mishtalea. So we understand as follows that the sira mishta, so, so what happened? To begin with, he did a hagrala. One was Lazazel, one was Hashem. And the seer that Zazel is not going to stand in the Azara until, until it's time to send it away. The seer the Chatat gets slaughtered, the blood gets brought in the Kodesh Kodeshim, it gets brought in the Hechal, it gets brought into the Mizbeh of the Hechal. But what happens if... Um, Meita uh, Mishtaleach. What happens if the Mishtaleach that's standing in the Azara died before the blood, before he finished bringing the blood from the Chatat? So Rabbi Yehuda says, Meita Mishtaleach Yishapech Adam. You pour out the rest of the blood from the Sira Chatat. In other words, it's no longer valid. There's no reason to keep it. You have to pour it out. Because why? Now you have to do another Hagrala. Now you have to do a whole other Hagrala. Sure. Yes. I think I already said this thing. The whole thing looks like an, uh, a procedure, an algorithm. You have to go through one of the possibilities 
And if you do it right, you, you get the kapara. If you don't do it right, you don't, have, you don't get the kapara. So it's like a machine. And you have to go through one of the possibilities of the, the logical possibilities of the procedure. Uh, today, I think also the, the, um, the Naveen also, they didn't like all these things. <laughs> at least some of them. Although, although you, you, your head scalp may, may beg to. And uh, I, I'll just say something quickly about that. I, I don't think that, I think if you look at the places where like Yishayao and Yirmiyao talk about, you know, the, they seem to be coming down on Korbanat. It's not that they, you know, it's not because they were against having Zvachim, but in the context is that I, that God doesn't want Zvachim if it doesn't, if it's not in concert with proper behavior. So the Zevach, the, it, the idea of the Zevach is it can bring Kapara, it brings Kapara when your intentions are good and when you behave properly. But it doesn't bring kapara, and it's worthless if you're bringing it to, you know, as some kind of a, um, uh, you know, as a get get out of jail free card for whatever peace, behavior you have. What what's that? Okay, can Kadeli have passed him in order to? Michael, yeah, you're you're still you're partially muted. Start again. Um, in order to appease. Say the whole thing. I missed I miss the whole thing. Lo meshane. That I, if I understand what you're saying that, oh, 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 that, okay. No, I'm, it's okay. I think everyone's tired, including me. And even though it's only two o'clock in the afternoon here. Um, The korban is not going to appease. It will not if you if you're bringing it to appease. It won't appease if you have not behaved properly. But okay, it's late. I think we're going to stop here, and I think it's. I I think this needs to be gone over again. And I apologize because I I had gone over it before a few times, and I, it still got mixed up in my own head. I'm trying to present it as clearly as possible. So I think next time, let's go over briefly. I'll try to summarize this maybe even with um, uh, some illustrations so it could be easier to, to keep in, in mind. But I mean, a, a flow chart actually. Maybe I'll do a flow chart. There is a flow, there is a flow chart possibility but what I want to say is that it's the these um, these questions come up elsewhere right these same kinds of questions come up elsewhere when I don't know when I know when I no longer know um, something like in this case, if I have two sirim and one, and I did the hagrala, and I knew that, you know, this was the azazel and this was the chatat, but now in order to finish the procedure of the avodah, the Beit Mikdash and Yom Kippur, I have to do another whole hagrala. So now the question comes: What happens to the first to the animal from the first? procedure from the first Takbala. So according to the Tanakama, I still bring the first animal. According to Rabbi Yehuda, I don't bring the first animal. Why is it important? And so here there's an emphasis on the idea that the, the these Sirim are essential to the overall Kapara that the Israel get on Yom Kippur. <coughs> and it's essential that they exist in the same time and place up to the time, you know, up to the point that each of them has accomplished whatever it is they need to accomplish. So 
we then go into this machloket between the Rebbe Hud and the Tanakama about which one now, you know, what, like I said, what happens to the first one or what happens to the second one? It all does become very important. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's a picky kind of thing. Maybe I'm a little bit too immersed in this myself. If you've ever learned Masechet Kinim, this is what, this is, Masechet Kinim goes into all kinds of permutations about what happens if you had, uh, uh, you know, two birds that were supposed to be brought, one with Chatat and one with Ola, and then they get mixed up, and you don't know, any longer know which one is Ola and which is Chatat, and what happens if one bird gets mixed up and a whole flock of other birds. It's actually a very, it's very algorithmic, it's very mathematical. Uh, and so, it's there. I, I, I'm just rambling now, but it, it, I, I, these things do have, I, I would argue, they do have an inherent importance. Um, but again, all in the context. I, I, you know, maybe I'll, I'll finish off by saying this because I think, Paul, I think you make an important point. And I think the point, the point that I think we would all agree on is this. These details are only going to be important in the con in the wider context of the Nevi'im. That is, it's all well and good that we're going to pay very close attention to these details, but it's only going to actually bring kapara if overall B'nai Israel uh, in general, and the Kohanim in particular, and the Kohen Gadol in particular, are actually throughout the year trying to do their best to behave properly. <coughs> and thus, this brings, this brings up the whole conceptual issue of what is the relationship between the behavior of us as individuals and us as, as a tzibur and the kedusha of the, of the mikdash. You might think that those two things are completely disconnected, but as Paul reminds us, they're not disconnected. That the whole idea of doing these korbanot and saying the viduyim and trying to get kapara, it's all, all of these things are connected. There is no, in the Torah, in the, from a Torah point of view, you can't have Taharata Mikdash, if the people are misbehaving in a willful way, it's not going to work. It doesn't work that way. Um, so maybe I should stop now and we'll think about this. I'll try to explain this a little bit better, but the, what you bring up is a very good point. You could have asked it, you could have brought, maybe, maybe you have brought it up before. Here it seems like we're getting to something very, very picky, but it is relevant. But how is it relevant to overall? And you may remember I asked that the, uh, I mentioned uh, before when we were looking at the Psukim um, in, uh, it said, when he brings the Samach Aron et Shtei Adav Al Rosh HaSair HaChai V'yitvadalav et kol avonot b'nei Yisrael v'et kol pishayam l'chol chatotam. What was that vidui? What is the vidui that's happening? Because the, the Psukim right before this talk about the, the procedure that he did inside of the Kodesh and the Kodesh HaKodeshim mm -hmm. That was to be the chaper al kodesh, to be the chaper al mispeh, and the chaper al aloha moed. And now he's talking about hitvadal avikol avonot bnei Yisrael. So what avonot are we talking about? What what is the relationship between being the chaper al kodesh and saying a vidui for all of the avonot of, of bnei Yisrael? 
So I'll leave that as a good place to stop and we'll pick up next time. Laila Tov, thanks everybody. So next Wednesday and I'll send everybody a reminder. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.